Hi folks, this is Nia, 125.22, and it is very early in the morning, 5.17. I got two things I want to discuss. One, my anger. Two, getting back on track. Now, I know that my videos are long. I watch other people's videos. They're only like 15 minutes. And I'm like, get to the point. Come on. And then I'll have mine like two hours. And I'm like, okay, this doesn't help. So we need to focus. But my point is trying to get my point across. And it's taken a lot of words and a lot of feelings and a lot of emotions to get through that. So bear with me. My anger is the healthcare system telling me they're going to give me antibiotics if I want help with COVID. Antibiotics? Like, it's a virus, dude. Check that off the vent list. Two, the counseling. I hired somebody for EMDR. They have not done EMDR. It's been three or four months I've been going to this person. They're not getting any more money from me. It's insanity. I am tired of counselors talking about my job. Jobs. I'm a doctor. This lady telling me to go get a job at the grocery store. Now, the grocery store? Like, this person has a medical op, like a clinic office. Why don't they offer me a space in there? And they keep telling me, oh, you're not licensed in this state. I did this is my third freaking year being licensed here. It's my eighth, seventh being licensed in Oregon. It's my, God, I don't know. Really, I had three, at least three renewals, or at least two renewals for Washington. So who knows? It's my first renewal here. So it's been, it's been over. It's been about two years. Anyways. When, right when COVID started, and I can't, that's hard to believe, but people keep, we keep deleting that. Anyways, I discussed with this person opening up a clinic space, so my goal should be getting a space, not going to go work at a very difficult job as a cashier or a checking person or one of those people that does picks up the groceries. My friend completely had her back destroyed doing that because um, she was in such a hurry and everything. I have medical issues, um, some from the car accident, some because of PTSD. So unfortunately, other people in the world cause damage to my body and I'm getting no support with that. I'm getting no disability for that. I'm getting no medical support. I'm supposed to be getting medical support. Going about telling somebody that they're going to go from a job, at least it's in my first degree working as a ranger. It's in the Parks and Rec. It was part of my agriculture natural resource communications that I had at Michigan State University when I was studying the prerequisites for medical school, which was the sciences, the chemistry, the biology. I took pre-calc. -cal and then I shifted because I thought I was too stupid to be in the sciences. And I shifted to fishery and wildlife, fisheries and wildlife. Excuse me, that was quite hard. So that was second year. I had a hard time with the Latin names. Um, I had a hard time with the rote memorization about everything, about every single tree that has that is not native to this country. Exactly what boat it came on in what year and from what country. That was a little bit hard, like the pilgrims, like whatever that I could still remember back in like 19 or 1657. They brought a such and such tree over here, 18 something. They brought this tree from Japan. Like that's really great. I'm glad that I learned that, but it caused me to struggle with my mind. I didn't know anything about dyslexia or ADHD. I knew about ADHD, but girls were definitely not very diagnosed back then. So I went into, I went and looked through my whole book. And I also studied um, 
for the summer Shona, which is which was the culture and the language of the people in Zimbabwe, which they pretty much speak English, but they said, we're so happy you Americans are learning this language because we don't even speak it. So I heard Shona and I do have sponsored children from Zimbabwe, which was a, quite a coincidence that do write in Shona. Imba. That's one of my favorite words. Jakanaka. Mombe is another one. So I love that language. Um, I would like to go over there one day. Um, I I own a store. You guys know that I have eBay. Um, I'm not going to show you the package. Unfortunately, I should. I have the corn, coin envelopes, so I wash my hands, didn't touch anything, got that stuff wrapped and out. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to mask up and I'm not going to I should wipe it down on the outside, huh? I'm not gonna um, keep it in this room. It's over by the door. So I just washed up, didn't eat, didn't drink, wrapped it up, and it's out of here because it's been two or three weeks since the first symptoms. And then I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna some, figure out how to get a test done today. But yeah, I so I I have a store. I haven't been advertising. This is shady, and I didn't want to sell anything, but something sold. And um, like I said, I just all I did was just wash up, didn't touch anything else. I haven't touched any of the shipping supplies or scissors in a couple of weeks. So I was just like, and then everything else is sealed up in plastic crates. So hopefully that keeps any germs. Um, I'll probably. Um, trying to figure out which plug. I'll probably run, um, I have a UV light. I'll probably run the UV light to do it out there. I need to do it in here to, to cycle, recycle this, or clean this air. I got a UV filter, so I'll run that next to the package for about an hour. And then I'll mask up, wash up again, mask up, put my, um, clean clothes on. I'll probably take a shower, put clean clothes on, put that clean or the outdoor clothes on and then put stick it in a baggie and take that with a mask on to the post office so that's I was trying not to sell anything but it gets to the point where they say that you're not contagious after so many days after being testing positive and after so many days of having symptoms which was really bad a week Saturday or I had symptoms, but Sunday before this past Sunday, so today is Tuesday, so that's what, like 10 days, 9 days, so I'll do a test anyway, um, and I'll probably wipe the package down with the alcohol wipe. <clears throat> I did have some pre-packaged of this, I have a multi-set of these items, but I didn't want to go digging around for it, so yeah, no, no cough, no sneeze mask and then I'll I'll sterilize the pack. I'm not going to spray it. I got some Lysol um, right when COVID started. We never really use it. I'm not going to spray it with Lysol um, but I will um, I'll sanitize I'll probably wipe it with alcohol first then sanitize it and then wash my hands again and put it in a baggie with my mask on. So like fingers crossed that that is okay because I heard something about Omicron sticking to plastic longer than other variants so just to be cautious like I said I'm not trying to sell stuff I got a bunch of stuff I need to sell and to move on with that this this counselor told me to work at the store not telling me to work at a doctor's office not telling me to go find a chiropractor acupuncture who might be renting space out like I could work Sunday nights or some random Friday night some random time where they're not at work just sublease it or have an extra room that they have a broom closet or something that I can ensure um, with my malpractice and my um, liability. Um, I have, people keep talking about me being a doula. I don't give a crap about my doula. Nobody's trying to hire me. People don't value me. There's people that are making two, $300,000 a year as a doula. I've made zero, big, fat, nothing. So I don't really focus on that. People don't ask me what I want to do. The more that I don't work for other people, the more that I 
have my own business stuff, have patients, have charting to do. I, I didn't do my charting because I got distracted again at home. My home office isn't set up the way that we had it when I moved here. It's like bedroom office. Um, so people, the counselors, I say, I need to go to you to work with stuff from my past. That is what's holding me back. I know it. I'm not stupid. And just like if I had a cancer on my back, it's not impossible for me to reach back there and remove the cancer and send it in and get it scrutinized by, um, there's a guy, uh, who's the people at the lab, I can't even think right now, you know what I mean, that, um, <clears throat> The doctor that checks the borders for the cancer and say seeing what what type it is and whether you got a clean cut and all, whether you have to go back and um, pathologist pathologist so I could do that but probably shouldn't it's kind of shady I should go to a doctor tell them my concern schedule an appointment with the dermatologist and have them and their assistants know me correctly, get the sample ready, charge my insurance, use the um, requisition form, fill it out, give me the um, band-aid afterwards, clean, sterilize the area, tell me the instructions, like do you, like, do it, it's not the pre-apocalypse yet where I have to go and cut out infected skin off myself you know it's you know we still got some civilized we still got some sort of civilization so the same with my brain it's like i know something's there i know i need help with this i could try to do it on my own i could ignore it i could pray and ask god to guide me and like that story that the people talk about yeah let's just say the butcher the baker the candlestick maker i am totally confusing two stories but that dude is falling out of a boat, falling out of a ship, and he's drowning, and the butcher comes by and said, hey man, I gotta give you a life jacket or a ring or whatever you call those things and pull you out of the water. He's like, no, 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 I prayed, God will help me, God will help me. The baker comes <laughs> and gives him, throws him a ring, he's like, no, I'm waiting for God, God is, I asked God to help me, and the candlestick maker, <laughs> and he gets the rig or the life jacket or he's like get in man grab my hand and the guy just sneaks down and dies and he goes to heaven and he's like god why didn't you save me it's like oh, i sent three guys to save you and you didn't pay it's just like god had supernatural with earthly natural comes together as a super god is super and humans natural comes together as a supernatural miracle um, and not just having God, like, poof, you're out in the water, and you're on the beach, kick back, and getting a suntan with your sunscreen on, of course. Um, I, for my self-employment, I have my stores, I have two online, I have more than two online stores, I actually have, like, five, so I, I have, like, my online stores. I have my crafting stuff, which is part of the online stores, and I have the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I have the um, notary and loan signing business. That's technically three, that's technically two different ones. So with the online and that, the crafting stuff should actually be a separate one. And then I have the um, medical clinic that's across three states and then I have the doula and then I have the birth work which for that being on the medical part of it is separate from doula the doula was because the midwife told me to get it and once I got it it was super expensive I figured why not just keep getting certified it was really expensive to the classes are around seven eight nine hundred dollars um, and then I am doing trials clinical clock trials on COVID. So you have to have just gotten um, a, po a positive test. So I'm going to show you, let's see if I 
can find it. I'm going to show you this, so I'm going to get off here. I got some really white bananas that are driving me crazy. I should have put them in the fridge. They would have still turned right. Extra rapes. Let me find this thing. Oh, I don't know what I did with that. It's okay. I'll come back with that um, later, maybe. Um, I have a test kit from LabCorp. They do have take-home tests. You can, you need to charge your insurance. They're going to charge a lot of money. I have, I'm trying to see where that is. It basically comes in a little box and it has, I think it just has one swab. The one I got was the flu and the COVID and the other one is, I don't know if they had just flu. They probably have other home tests you could do and then I definitely had like just the COVID. So I, that's how I found out about the first study which I showed you, I thought, on the other video, we had to do um, this, and then the meds are either placebo or not placebo, and then I'm supposed to be getting a package today with medication that I ordered, and medication that is another study, and it kind of sucks, the first study only pays you $10, they said gift card, it might not even be money for finger poke, and you use only two finger pokes, and then the other one is $100 Amazon, which I don't really want to do that. I'm like, I want to check. But it is what it is. Um, I do have a manifest uh, bowl over here that one of my family members told me they had set up and put some money and a $2 bill and stuff in their dish. And they ended up having money come to them and it's not saying that we're not working or that we're not studying or that we're not going to school or that we're not I was trying to make money work for me I was talking about the cra uh, crashing stock market in cryptocurrency so my anger with these practitioners that when I hire them and say I want to go through my past and do the EMDR and help to heal my brain but you're spending the whole time talking about me going to go get a job at the grocery store when I told you I missed work at the job that I already have. Why would I quit another job? Like if I got laid off or something and nobody hired me for my clinic within a month, then I'm gonna be, you know, pulling at, you know, whatever I could pull at. But I, I don't wanna be in desperation anymore. I have a career, I have student loans, I can't play this game and pretend that I'm not educated and that I'm not qualified and um, where my qualifications are there's uh, many people of color that are doctors um, natural paths clinic owners um, directors of different institutions well, I don't know a lot about directors but different um, positions with educational positions and I just have to realize in this town with all the um, southern and the racist people the people judging me they're going to be like, oh, you're brilliant. Oh, you're delivered, baby. Oh, you do this. Oh, you do this. Go work in the grocery store. And you're just like, why don't you go work at the grocery store? Why don't you go earn your $15? Like, if I didn't have a job and I wanted part-time, I would have gone to McDonald's a long time ago. I would have, I, I applied to go back to pizza more than once. There's management job. That's what I have. It's like, it's not my fault these people lay me off. It's like, at least have somebody do something in healthcare if you're if you're into healthcare. Like, I just uh, tried to get a job with the county health department here. I sent an email. I didn't get a response. Um, <clears throat> and then actually, that reminds me, I want to do um, outreach for opioid um, overdose and education and um, Narcan. I just got an email back from them yesterday. Um, I'm really passionate about that. There's these white guys at work that talk about how horrible these people of color are. And I said something about, oh, I have a bunch of postcards I could send you about Narcan. It's like I found needles and stuff. You might find somebody. Of course, it wasn't known to CPR. Like, we might find someone laying on the ground and overdose. And they, they can, this guy is saying, well, let them, let the, EMS deal with it. I'm not going to save somebody's life that's laying there. You're looking at that person and you're already imagining that they're scum. You're already imagining that their life is not worth you saving. That you're not even going to give them CPR, let alone have Narcan on them. But what 
what turns people around. It's, it's their daughters and their granddaughters and their grandsons that either go to a party and get some fentanyl. Say, oh, you know, this can be fun. You're going to have a good time. Everyone's dancing. You're going to be with the big kids, you know. Some 14-year-old girl from private school is going to use something an OD and no one's going to have Narcan and they're going to call it a tragedy and they're going to say, oh, I wish somebody had. Yeah. I don't care if it's someone that's been on the street for 35 years and haven't taken a shower in two decades and they stink and they're dirty and they got lice. Why is that guy or girl or a woman not worth, in your eyes, valuable enough? She squirt some medicine up their nose that the co communities and governments are giving out for free. Someone's got to pay for that, but it's a lifesaver. Are you going to do a high class? Say, oh, somebody driving a Beamer, you know, their car break down. I'm going to do everything I can to go over there and let them use my cell phone and wait and make sure they're safe and bring them some water. Like... You need, like, these people, and I'm just using that as an example. You don't have to save someone. You don't have to do CPR on somebody. But I feel like there's so many comments where people are devaluing somebody because they're stereotyping or they're putting them in a category where they are superior. They're privileged. They're superior. They have a certain skin and eye color, and they feel like, Impoverished people below them, people of color below them, drug addicts below them. And then what kind of medicine do you have in your freaking cabinet, buddy? How many opioids have you used? What kind of stuff does your wife have in her cabinet? You're going to have a high class where you're going in with your Medicare and you're getting dope. But this dude had a freaking injury from the war. Had his leg amputated, has arm issues, is in a wheelchair, lost housing, and got addicted to pain pills during the time where they had the surgery and were taking the post-op pain pills and they happened to be neglected and ignored by society and by their relatives. And they're not a war hero, the purple heart that they earned, nobody cared. And they ended up on the street where they drank, they didn't want to drink. And someone said, try this, man, we'll have a good time. And they might have thought they were doing not, they might have thought they were doing cocaine or something. Like, oh, just do it once in a while. And someone put fentanyl in it. And now they're like, give me more of that stuff, man. And then they find out what it is. And they have a new monkey on their back, man. And I, I mean, I know how it is. I know how it is. Because I've been there. I haven't been with that fentanyl and all the stuff is. I got sober 17 years ago, 17 and a half years ago, clean and sober. Friend, sister hooked on pain pain meds because of a, she fell out of a boat. I don't know if she fell out of the boat or she was skiing, but they had a motorboat and the motor chopped up her legs. She almost died when she got hooked on pain pills. I, had, I was like 17 or 18 when I heard this story. I had never heard of that before. What? You know, hooked up pain pills? What the heck's a pain pill? You know, and I had end up getting hooked on Oxycontin from someone who's getting too high of a dose from their doctor for cancer. And this dude was trying to deal with help, get help in other people while they in turn helped him get groceries because he was caregiving for the mother. Couldn't work. See what I'm saying? That it, you know, good kid like me, coming from a military family, parent, both parents were professionals, dad was an officer, became a professor, mom was a teacher, tennis coach, worked as a manager at the Air Force Base, um, roller rink, all this kind of stuff. I, my brother told my parents that I didn't, that he was concerned about my problem, my drug problem. I said, Not our little girl, you're a liar, don't be talking bad about her. And then later on, I got clean and sober after being homeless countless amount of times and being near death and being near getting stuck at the border in Mexico just for being stupid with a bunch of pets in the hotel and all this stupid stuff. And my dad said, and when I watched that movie about such and such, and yeah, that was a real drug addict, not that stuff you're talking about. That stuff that I'm talking about, what the heck? 
I almost died in the freaking desert in the middle of freaking, I don't even know of this country. I had green stuff, apparently green snot running out my nose. and I literally was almost dead. That was my ex-husband nursed me back to life. I'll talk more about those adventures or that. I barely remember coming in and out. I got lost in the desert, took some tranquilizer, oh, like overdosed on these, and I was malnourished too, so I hadn't had any food, and I was like in and out of consciousness. We were homeless, so we were living out there with the hot sun, and he kept making the little tent and moving me around. Sometimes I feel, I have a bad taste in my mouth from the illness, and I feel like, was that true what they said about stuff seeping back out of your spinal cord? after you, um, when you get older, after the stuff you ingested as a youngster, and I'm, I'm still wondering it, but I have a passion for helping, I thought my clinic would be full of people trying to come down off of, um, drugs and trying to, I mean, of course you want them to go to a detox place, but some people aren't able to, or they're not able, there's no rooms, I know someone that got a job trying to do this drug stuff and all these naturopaths like, what can I do? This patient needs help. I wanted those patients to hire me and they didn't. And I am a peer support doctor. Peer support birthing person. But I got many facets of experience and education. I've done so much extra training for anything that I can grasp. I've done so much extra training, guys. You can't even imagine what I do in my spare time. So the more that I'm not working for somebody else, especially at low hours, the more business comes to me. Like almost, it doesn't fall in my lap because I got to do, I got to sow those seeds and then I reap the benefits. But if I work too much, it, it really was a garden. Guys, if it really was a garden, I would have this plot, and I'd sow, and I'd pull the weeds, you know, clean, uh, thin out the crop. I'd have the uh, water, whatever kind of irrigation I'd have set up for the water. Um, <clears throat> put up a scarecrow if I need to, put some seven dust on there if I need to fertilize or whatever, pick this, prune this, blueberries here, apple trees, broccoli, winter um, vegetables, kales and stuff, um, start my sprouts inside the house. I might go to say, oh, okay, this guy, I signed up to do this job, I'm going to work one or two days a week. Okay, so the, the garden starts getting a little brown, the birds start taking advantage, stuff starts getting a little, you know, oh shoot, I got to really work really hard those days. I got to wake up extra early and deal with it and come home in the dark with a headlamp and work on it. But then you get sucked into that low paying job two, three, four, five, six, seven days in a row. Four hours of work turn into eight hours, turn into 10 hours. Come home exhausted, hungry, angry, dirty, tired, sore. And then the garden just starts wilting. The stuff's not getting maintained, starts getting sickly, doesn't get fertilized, the animals have done come in, cats done tore it up, you didn't put up the fence you meant, now the deer have found it and ate up all my carrots or whatever. And then you sowed, you paid a lot of money, you had bought the land, you're paying for the taxes on that, and now you lost everything. You had ten thousand dollars worth worth of produce for the for the year. You lost everything. Maybe you got like one head of lettuce that some rat dragged over into the corner and you could it has teeth marks in it. Mate, that's the only thing you have. And you're like, well, I worked that job and I made six hundred dollars a month, but you just lost, you know, you just lost nine hundred dollars a month worth of produce. That that's like the price, straight like wholesale price. So you could eat it, or you could sell it for. If, you, if the wholesale price was two dollars and had a lettuce and you sold it for four at a roadside stand at the Amish market or whatever or some farmers market see what I'm saying and then you see how you cry because you watch what you sow I was gonna cry. you watch what you sow go to waste and these people say 
oh, we have even a crappier job. We're going to put you at more risk. You're going to be in front of people that are coughing on you, that are sick with COVID, that know they're sick. They're going to trash your work truck. They're going to steal your snacks and your water that you left in there for yourself. And they're going to lie and say that you weren't working when ultimately you told your boss that you had a quick phone call to make and that you're going to take your lunch break, that you already got permission. And they're going to lie and tell people that you slack and that they took out all the trash that you've been taking out and all this stuff and then the boss sends you long texts and emails about how you need to spend hours a day picking up trash on the ground and out of the water when it's 14 degrees outside but they won't pay for you to have warm outdoor clothes and that you're supposed to be out there for six to eight hours in the cold wet rain driving a two-by-two truck during ice and snowstorms where the cars in front of you are literally wrecking before your eyes. And besides COVID, you're picking up bottles of urine and hypodermic needles and tampons used and applicators and diapers that are torn up. And, mm. and then they ask you, tell you that, oh, you need to go clean the toilets. To clean the toilets? It's like, you're, I'm not walking around at this button up shirt with a collar. I'm not opposed to doing toilets. I'm not sure that was in my job criteria, but I feel like I should have some raggedy clothes to wear, some different type of work clothes that you provide me that like, I don't make even enough to, I was going to have that trailer, brand new stainless steel furniture, front loading washing machine dryer inside of the trailer would have been three or $400 a month. My income was so low that they we're just like, how are you going to get that? It's $400 a month, including taxes, maybe $500 a month, taxes, insurance, extra insurance. And now you got to pay one to $2,000 a month to rent places that are way smaller than the trailer, have no yard, no washer and dryer. And it costs over $90 to go use the laundromat for four loads, four baskets of clothes. So it's $25 a basket. $25 a basket. And that's not even drying everything because the dryer is so expensive. It's 25 cents per two minutes or three minutes or something ridiculous. And then it doesn't get hot. So you just air fluff in your crap. <laughs> it's like you have half your stuff you're literally bringing home and hanging up as soon as you get home at 1030 at night. So watching my clinic and my notary business and everything go in the toilet and seeing this like garden wilt and die and get overrun with weeds and disease and vermin. And knowing that you saw when you got home your vegetables growing and you're sitting inside eating nuts and crap and you could be eating salads because that's another thing when you have the ability to grow and use your own fertilizers and um, chemicals that you know what they are if you even need them at all you take that in pack, pick it fresh oh I got to wake up when I wanted to wake up. I went and packaged up my stuff. I went and did a couple telehealth visits. I did the charting, took a little break, went back to charting. Then I did the billing, got ready for dinner, picked the tomatoes, picked the salad, put that in a bowl for my family, made a bedtime juice out of my vegetables. Or maybe I have some fruits from my fruit trees that I froze. I can uh, juice that. Excuse me, I could dehydrate some stuff, have a little granola type snack with fruit, dried fruit on it. <clears throat> and you can go grow grapes, you can grow apples, you can grow blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, um, and all that stuff can be preserved. Like I said, how many wholesale ten thousand or something dollars a year people are getting like a ton of food i know this one lady who lives on an island and she was doing telehealth and then you're not only are you able to 
eat really healthy that you're able to try to prevent chronic disease and if anything just filling your body with nutrients so you see when you go to work at the mcdonald's or the target a lot of those people like people bus drivers and stuff you see these people work they keep the job they keep full time they keep their benefits and they're able to buy a house for cheaper than it is to rent and they're able to have vacation and sick pay and a retirement account but for me why would i go to college for 17 years to become a professional and not use that professional mind to help others and it my passion is to help others um survival becomes front and center but the survival becomes where I finally watched I didn't read it but what is it 1984 where the people are having to just be like robotic and do this and be inspired up pictures on the wall a picture of the pictures on the wall this was supposed to be like a 10 or 11 minute video but I am fuming mad at the system um, when you're at home it feels dirty because the old days people went to work and then everyone went to work. I take the dog to doggy care, certain kids to school, the other set of kids go to the babysitter and they're working and they're playing and they got vacation and they're happy and they're living in the suburbs and they got a new car all the time. Bills are paid, but at what price? That, like families of nurses and different things, it's like, good job you got the American dream but my American dream has to be able to support my accommodations needed from my medical issues and that's where it becomes tricky because people I know that are way have a way better time at working than I do for physical and mental reasons they're getting over a thousand dollars a month of disability and have literally worked two days in their life. Like I know a couple of people and they say, Oh, the workers tried to get me to work. I went to work. I didn't like it. So I never went back. They didn't like it. They didn't say that I couldn't do it. They just said they'd rather stay at home and watch TV all day. Why would you go to work if you're getting $1,200 a month of a check and your other relatives are getting the same amount of money? So you're getting 2,500 plus food stamps plus Medicaid plus Section 8 housing for free or you're paying $200 and you've got like $2,200 left to play with every month. And that's why you have all the fanciest newest phones and laptops and TVs and you're going on family vacations. You always have the nicest vehicle in the neighborhood. And then you see me with my raggedy self. It's like, oh, that doctor, yeah, she should, she should become a trash man. Like, I should become a trash man. It pays better than the job that I have. But why not go and get a lease on a building and put up a plaque that says, Dr. Mia's clinic, medical clinic, come inside, naturopathic doctor. Why not put that up? And set up the reception area and set up the treatment room and set up the office and clean the bathroom and why not set that up have a little lab thing going on why not set that up that's where I'm supposed to be I'm supposed to be sitting there greeting my patients I'm supposed to be sitting there greeting my patients and I want a little backyard area with flowers and stuff that could be accessible or maybe even a side yard I prefer like a back they could go, walk right through the treatment room and office on the side, a little kitchen, and then a little lab um, with a lab, with its own refrigerators and sinks. <clears throat> so a centrifuge on the wall, um, sharps container. <sighs> Poor Mia. Yeah. 